Lando Norris crushes the competition to secure pole position for the Dutch Grand Prix title rival. Max Verstappen joins him on the front row. Elsewhere, Carlos Sainz and Lewis Hamilton suffer a qualifying shocker and Alex Albon is disqualified from qualifying after his car was found in breach of the technical regulations. From Racing News 365, my name is Nick Golding and I'm joined by Racing News 365 royalty, Aaron Deckers, who is in a very wet and windy Zanville. Aaron, it was <laughs> not like this for qualifying. Qualifying, it was not quite sunny. It was cloudy and dry, but the rain has come in. We've got to start with Lando Norris because what a performance. Three tenths quicker than Max Verstappen to secure pole. And actually, Lando's time was nine tenths quicker than what Max did last season to secure pole. Red Bull advisor, Dr. Helmut Marco said yesterday that Lando is Red Bull's big threat. And, and it seems that once again, Marco was right. Yeah, exactly. Just like you mentioned, once again, Helmut Marco is right. He's always there spot on. So certainly when it comes to this, right, on the sportive side, he knows, he knows all those guys. He knows those youngsters. As anyone else, you know, he's really following it always up closely. Yeah, once again, we saw today what Landon Norris can do and what a lap he did, right? I mean, first it was Max Verstappen putting down a, a nice a nice uh, lap. But then uh, the fans here, they got absolutely mad. Also went in a good way, of course, when Landon Norris uh, put in the real pole position in a yeah, really uh, an amazing time. So, so uh, incredible quick. So it shows what the McLaren is capable of, and especially Landon Norris. And I feel like he's going to continue where he yeah, actually left, you know, after the summer break. Okay, Spa was maybe not a good one for him. But before, he was yeah, really smashing it, in my opinion. And he, de he did it once again, incredibly. Like you mentioned, like the difference between him and Max Verstappen, it's such a big gap. Surprisingly, uh, that it's that big. But yeah, what a performance of Landon Norris. And uh, I think he's the big, big favorite for tomorrow as well. And of course, McLaren did introduce a really big upgrade package for this weekend. Its first big upgrade package since Miami and of course Lando claimed his first F1 win there. Given how little running there's been this weekend, obviously FP1 was really wet, FP2 was dry and then FP3 this morning was also really wet but of course red flagged for most of the session after a huge crash for Logan Sargent who didn't take part in qualifying. His car was a fiery mess. It does seem though that McLaren's upgrades like in Miami are working really really well. Yeah, exactly. And also interesting to see. I mean, in the beginning of the season, I think they were all a little bit surprised that McLaren had like a difficult start. Like uh, Last year, they really yeah, found it. That's it. It seems like they were on the right uh, way, right direction. Everything seemed to be in place. And difficult, surprisingly difficult start of the season this year. But then from now on, also Miami and also here, especially here, interesting. Uh, I mean, not a lot of time, as you mentioned, in the practice session. And they still managed to use this upgrade in a wide way. And that's my opinion very interesting is it's interesting to see that it seems like with the wind tunnel and all the simulated tests that they are doing and then putting it down on the track also it seems that those systems are really you know working very precisely uh together so i think that's also very interesting to see that mclaren also there seems to have made uh, made a big step as well and i think that's a big uh huge advantage if you have it at this moment especially in the in the constructors championship and it's such a fight with red bull if you know that you have when you bring a new upgrade from the wind tunnel and the simulator and you put it down on the track and it immediately works, I think it gives even yeah, more confidence to the team that they really can make it difficult for, uh, for Red Bull this year in the Constructors' Championship and tomorrow and definitely also for the race year. Uh, I think also Max Verstappen mentioned like, yeah, the, the, the gap already shows that Landon Norris is the big favorite here for tomorrow. But of course, Max does still start on the front row at least, which is the second best place he can start after pole position. So there's still this chance he could claim yeah. a fourth win in Zanvoort. Given that we think it's going to be dry on Sunday, we know overtaking is really difficult when it is dry at Zanvoort. Is Max's best bet tomorrow to try and beat Lando Norris to go ultra aggressive on that first lap? Yeah, right. He has to, right? He has to, to try it. I mean... We all know Max Verstappen. I think he's always known for like if there's even the slightest chance, he will try it. And I think definitely here for his home crowd, he will give it a chance. Especially if he has a good start, then everything is possible at the start. I think for him also, it's really about this. Yeah, first maybe first maybe second lap where he can do something. And then strategy-wise, that would maybe of course also be a possibility. But on the other hand, 
McLaren seems to be in favor of there as well with, of course, El Scorpio Street also uh, behind Max Verstappen. So I think, yeah, as you mentioned, it has to be done by Max in the first or second lap. But won't be the easy also that huh? on this tiny circuit we're doing <laughs> here, it's very difficult. But uh, yeah, also for the fans, I think they would love it if he, he would even give it a try if he has the possibility let's say, to give it a try. So that must be yeah, exciting for the fans tomorrow as, as well. Uh, if you're a McLaren fan with Norris or... Norris or Max Verstappen, I think we all, all hope that Norris will be right because he mentioned that uh, he thinks it's going to be a big battle with Max Verstappen. Yeah, I think we all hope for that. And yeah, regarding then the weather that you're mentioning, I mean, yes, I am Dutch, but as you can see, it's so <laughs> different, it's difficult to predict here, especially in Zandvoort. You can compare it with Spa Krokershaw, though that is more like little hills. And that's why it is the climate here, of course, with the sea, as you can see. We predicted it would rain during the color flying. It didn't before it did, but after it did. So who knows what the weather will be like tomorrow. Well, I think the Dutch fans, they've been through heavy wind. They've been through heavy rain. They deserve a good race tomorrow. And hopefully Max and Lando deliver that for them. And you make a really good point. Obviously, in P3 is Oscar Piastri starting right behind Lando and Max. Sergio Perez, we thought was going to be in fourth. Just missed out. George Russell got P4, so he's in P5, which actually... For Perez at the moment is a pretty good performance, but it does seem that Max needs to maybe be a little bit careful because a small mistake in the first couple of laps trying to attack Lando could see McLaren all of a sudden have a one-two after a first few laps. Yeah, exactly. Also, that uh, it's got to be very difficult for Max Verstappen, but I think since it's being it's, it's his home Grand Prix and seeing the gap that he has in the drivers' championship, I have the feeling that. You know, if he has the slightest possibility, he will try it because, you know, it's his home race. Maybe in another race, he would be a little bit more like cautious and be like, OK, I'm in the lead for the championship. But I guess here for his home crowd, yeah, he, he must have have that extra feeling of like, you know what? There is a little gap. Let's, let's try it. So I think, yeah, especially up front, it's going to be really interesting. And yeah, I agree also with Perez, uh, very interesting after such a difficult part of the season. Then he comes here yesterday, such a difficult day. Then no track time in the morning, and then everyone, including himself, I guess, were worried. And then he just yeah, quite, I wouldn't say hammered it down, but I think, yeah, he's, he's, he's you know, he's putting a, a good performance here. I mean, yes, he's all Max's space, but I think most of the drivers, former drivers, also mentioned, like, yeah, almost every driver would lose two or three tenths normally already on Max for step. Okay, it's almost four tenths, but after the season that he had so far, and then after... Uh, taking into consideration that he had almost no track time. And for me, it's quite impressive what Perez is doing here. So also interesting to see if he can put it down also on race pace and, you know, get the points finally again for uh, Red Bull on the board and start the, the second part of the season with a good feeling must be yeah, important for him, seeing that there's also another race engineer on board this weekend. And actually with Perez, he wasn't very happy after qualifying because of an incident in Q1 with Lewis Hamilton, which actually has been investigated right now as we're recording this. Obviously, Hamilton and Checo, both with the stewards after Hamilton, potentially impeded Checo in Q1 at Turn 9. Sergio Perez seems adamant that Hamilton needs to get a penalty, which won't actually hurt Hamilton that much, given he only qualified in P12. But in your view... Do you think a penalty is fair for what happened? Because as you mentioned, Zanvor is so tight and twisty. <laughs> it didn't seem there was a lot of places Hamilton could go to get out of the way. No, exactly, exactly. And I think it's also interesting to see because, yes, Paris was a little bit furious in the beginning. And then afterwards, as you know, in the Formula E as well, the drivers come here, they're a little bit more calm down, see <laughs> the situation also on TV. And yeah. then they're like, yeah, what could Hamilton really do? He already felt sorry. He felt like he doesn't really deserve the penalty, but he said, yeah. Because in other situations, this year, drivers didn't get a penalty. He says, like, yeah, probably will Lewis will get it as well. Uh, he said it's a little bit too much, too severe. But he said, yeah, this is it, uh, what will happen. Uh, the only thing, he was a little bit frustrated still on also. Uh, like, after the qualifying session, let's say, an half hour later, uh, he felt like, okay, he uh, had to use one more so set of soap. He said that cost them a little bit in the U3. But he said he did it at the thing it would have uh, called it, cost them a position. So all by all, I think a pretty solid day for Perez and yeah, very interesting to see what he can do uh, tomorrow then. And just on Lewis Hamilton, obviously, P12 knocked out in Q2. So if he does get a penalty, it'd be P15. But 
even yeah. from P12, he doesn't think points are going to be possible. He said that his car was a nightmare to drive after changes made by Mercedes yeah. overnight. Of course, no driver really got to see if their changes to their cars were any good because of FP3 in the rain and Logan Sargent's big crash. And Hamilton looked good in Q1, obviously got through on one set of soft tyres, unlike a lot of other drivers, but then all of a sudden just seemed to have no pace in Q2, like Carlos Sainz, who went out as well in P11. Yeah, interesting. Huh? I think it's also this year so many times that, or you feel that some t a team, a particular team, will do it good in their race, and the whole yeah. race weekend is just difficult for them. It's really hard for us also, definitely for us to judge. I mean, you can see even with the drivers, Lewis Hamilton is so honest about it also today. Uh, after the session, he also mentioned, like, look, we tried something else and it completely got the other way. Just totally no feeling in the car. And yeah, you saw that it's going to be a difficult race for him. Uh, maybe indeed, if he takes a penalty, maybe he will take even a pit lane start. I don't know. Maybe he can take that in consideration as well to change some things and at least get a better feeling in the car starting the second part of the season. But yeah, very interesting to see that it was like, yeah, such a strange day for Lewis Hamilton uh, here today in Zandvoort. And of course, he's going to need a big drive on Sunday to get some points. And just finally, we've got to mention Logan Sargent and obviously what happened in third practice because the conditions were horrible. And the yep. one thing all the drivers know in the wet is just do not touch the grass, which is seemingly what Logan Sargent did. And because of how tight and twisty the circuit is, there's not a lot of runoff for a lot of the circuit. And what a massive impact it was to his car. Obviously, he missed qualifying. Somehow the chassis is OK, but... Yep. The fire yeah. afterwards and just the, the state of the car, you could see the Williams engineers, their heads in their hands in disbelief because it was a huge crash. Wow, a very big one. Huh? And then with the fire afterwards and, uh, you know, and then of course, when you watch it on TV, I think for us all the same watching here and you and me, it, it seems like it takes very long, you know, before they can fire, you know, put the fire down. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a devastating day. I think for Williams and for Logan Sargent is just, very unfortunate that he touched the grass and then yeah, you know this kind of speed with acceleration immediately big big impact and yeah as you said indeed it's very surprising you mentioned the chassis is still fine because it was a very big one um but yeah difficult start of the second part of the season that with Logan Sargent who is most likely let's say to leave Formula One at the end of the year and you hope for him that you know he's gonna have a better second part of the season to at least end this Formula One career probably his most likely Formula One career in a better way but yeah what a difficult day for him here in Zandvoort. Aaron before I let you go and get somewhere dry we need to do a bold prediction for the race because somehow whenever myself and Ian do these bold predictions they are always wrong on your first one yesterday you said Orlando Pohl Max second and Oscar third so you, you somehow <laughs> have gone I've got your first bold prediction absolutely spot on so I'm gonna say we're gonna have a Max Verstappen win tomorrow I've just got a feeling the Dutch crowd's Max is going to want that win. I can see a Max overtake on the first lap. So I'm going to go for a Max Verstappen win. So I'm going, to, I'm going to put you on the spot because can you go two out of two for bold predictions? What, what are you going to say for Sunday? Well, I first got to help myself a little bit out of uh, <laughs> Fernando Alonso said uh, today. I really wanted to mention that. He said today he was the one that was lucky in Q3 because uh, Fernando said with the wind here, he said it literally cost uh, tens of a second uh, in a lap. Let's say so. He says sometimes it was wind and it really cost you a tenth of a lap. He said it was not a bad lap, but you look at the timing water, you were like, Oh wow, it's a bad <laughs> lap, right? He was even surprised himself. And he says, Q3, he said it was just lucky, I could have done my lap. And I said, oh, No, it's good because you know, there was not a lot of wind. So maybe I was lucky yesterday, like Fernando said, he was lucky today. Uh, well, if you go for Max, then of course I have to do it vice versa, then I will go for Lando Norris. So it's another orange party for the Dutchies here because I'm sure he can <laughs> Lando wins. They will, uh, uh, you know, make a proper orange party for him as well. Awesome stuff. Aaron, go and get yourself somewhere dry. This has been the latest episode of the Racing News 365.com F1 updates. Myself and Aaron, we'll see you on Sunday after the Dutch Grand Prix. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.